Happy Friday, Capital Region. This is Dayton Maxwell with the CAP team coming at you again this Friday. Hope everybody had a good week. By the way, this is my blue shirt number 128. Hope you like it, because that's really all I have is blue shirts and a couple green ones. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you a little bit about a thing called gross domestic product and uh, actually real gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is the value of goods and services produced within a nation's borders for a specific time period. And usually that's a 12 month time period. And the value of the United States gross domestic product at the end of 2019 was probably like something like 23 trillion, something like that. And real gross domestic product is GDP that is inflation adjusted. So as I'm talking and you're thinking, ah, this guy, um, I need to look at something while he's talking. So as, you, as you're looking at the board behind me, what you can see is uh, just a real simple graphic of GDP over time. And what you'll see is that from 2009 until the last quarter of 2019, gross domestic product uh, grew at a real rate of about 2.3%. Some might say 2.9, but it's really uh, anyway, 2.3 to 2.9% gross domestic product. So here we are at the fourth quarter of 2019. We're looking ahead into 2020 and things are looking good. All of a sudden the global pandemic thing uh, strikes the planet and all of a sudden economies are slowing down. So if we look at the gross domestic product decrease for the first quarter of 2020, what uh, in general, what economists are saying is that decrease is between four and 6%. A lot of economists are saying it's about 4.8%. And if you think about it, the economy was really only shut down for the last two weeks of March because that's when our stay in place orders came. And therefore we really had a pretty normal first quarter of 2020. And if we think about what's already happened or what is about to conclude for the second quarter of 2020 with regard to gross domestic product, what we are seeing is that the decrease is likely gonna be the, the most dramatic, substantial decrease in the history of mankind and the history of planet Earth. Maybe not, but pretty close. Economists are, and this is what I've been reading, saying that quarter two, which is almost over with, so don't feel bad, we're still alive. Quarter two is gonna show a, a gross domestic product decrease in the United States of probably close to 40% annualized rate. And again, that's because the economy shut down and people just couldn't produce things, they couldn't buy things, et cetera, et cetera. So don't panic. Um, it looks like that that decrease of the second quarter is gonna turn around in quarter three and quarter four of 2020. And from an optimist viewpoint, all that was lost in quarter two could possibly be regained in quarter three and quarter four of 2020. Therefore, we could be looking at a picture at the end of the year that um, is pretty similar to the start of the year, kind of like a, a V-shaped trough. We hit the bottom quick and we're back out quick. There's a possibility and I'm optimistic we could see this. All right, so what does this mean for agriculture? And what does this mean for agriculture, right? So, well, interest rates are really low. So if you're borrowing money, that's good. Uh, the federal government has injected tons of money into agriculture and the general, general economy through the CARES Act. And there's been a lot of stimulus funds out there. The feds are also uh, buying mortgage-backed securities and buying treasury instruments, which again is injecting more money into the economy. So there's, so we should, liquidity is our game. Liquidity is what the feds are trying to do. So hopefully we can maintain liquidity in agriculture. And oh, by the way, when the economy's down, things are cheap. So if you're doing purchasing in agriculture, ideally uh, fuel is one of them. Your fuel's way down, uh, purchasing, you can buy things cheaper. All right, so if you have questions about gross domestic product or questions in general, please call me 
or email me. As always, it's my pleasure to serve you. See you next Friday.